Hello neighbor, Beechard Moorfield here. Are you ready to make it a great day? I believe you are. I've been talking to you the past couple of days about what I call the Acts 29 church. James chapter 5 says that the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up. I believe that. Let me tell you a little bit about the Acts 29 church. The year was 1976. My wife and I were attending a church of God, uh, not a large church, but it was a great little church, and they were in the midst of revival meetings, and the man holding those meetings was a true New Testament evangelist. His name was Wayne Smith. My father at that time was quite sick. He was suffering with bleeding ulcers and had in fact been scheduled for one more exam, and then following that, the next day would be a surgery uh, that they would attempt to correct that issue in his stomach. I shared this with the evangelist, uh, Brother Wayne Smith, and on a Tuesday night after the service, he said, well, let's go see your dad. I believe the time has come to minister to him. We went to my mom and dad's house, and, and uh, I introduced him to my parents. He could see that my father was suffering. Uh, he was in a lot of pain. He was just lying on the couch. His color wasn't good. Brother Smith quoted James 5, 13 through 16, call for the elders of the church, anoint them with oil. You know the scripture. And he asked if we had any anointing oil in the house. Well, traditionally, of course, that would be olive oil. Well, we had none. Uh, I, he thought for a moment and he asked my mom, he said, do you have any cooking oil? I thought, I, my mind was going in about a million directions at that time. My mom went to the pantry and retrie retrieved a bottle of uh, Wesson oil, if I remember correctly, and that she used for cooking. Brother Smith said, that'll be fine. He took the Wesson oil and he anointed my father. I learned that night that it's not so much the type of oil, it's the faith that you release. He anointed my father with that oil and then he prayed the prayer of faith and God moved. When he said amen, there was an immediate felt presence of the Lord in the room. And my father, who had been lying on the couch, just abruptly sat up. His, his color had changed. The, his, his face had a almost a glow about it. His breathing had steadied. The pain was gone, he said. And it was a wonderful thing to see him and in a time of rejoicing that followed. We thanked uh, Brother Smith, and, and he departed, and, and my mom and dad and I continued to fellowship for a while. Well, two days later, my dad entered the hospital here in Winston-Salem. He came in for those final tests, and the next day they were going to go in for the surgery. Well, the tests were performed, and the next morning, my mom and I were at the hospital early to be with my dad. We arrived at the hospital, and the doctor came in. He was a bit quiet, and then he walked over to my dad, and he called him by name. He said, Clyde, I don't know what's happened to you, but you're not going to need surgery. We're releasing you to go home this morning. Uh, my, my, my dad was thrilled. He, he knew it was coming. My mom was thrilled. I was thrilled. But when my mom and dad had left the room, and, and I had stepped aside with the doctor, I said, Doctor, tell me what happened. And... The doctor told me that after examining the test the day before, they had done, I believe it's called an endoscopy, uh, a, a tube is inserted down the throat. They examined the inside of the stomach with a little camera to see what needed to be done. He said after the results of, the, uh, of that examination were looked at closely, they determined my dad did not have bleeding ulcers. In fact, there were no ulcers in his stomach. In fact, the stomach was completely healed. What do you call that, Brother Morfield? I call that Acts 29 church. I call that the working of God after those days immediately following in which we read about the working of God through the apostles and through the church in the 28 chapters of the book of Acts. But that 29th chapter, and perhaps chapters beyond, are still being written even today. Healings are still taking place. Jesus Christ is still on the throne. He hasn't died. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And my friend, I want to encourage you today. 
I don't know what you need. It could be a healing in your body. God will do that. If, if you've grown in your faith, you may be believing God right now for a complete restoration, not only a healing, but a restoration of all that's been lost in days, weeks, months, even years of past suffering. But I want you to understand something. Jesus is on the throne. The Word of God that I was reading just before I began this today. The Word of God is still true. Hold to it. Believe it. Trust it. And watch Acts 29, God, go to work in your life. Now knowing that, make it a good day. And better yet, make it a great day. God bless.